Hello, my name is Lewis Talley. In this video, we'll talk about the redundant historian. First, let's begin by defining what a redundant historian is. Then we'll actually go in and do a live demo of it. This setting is actually a configuration setting of the historian itself under the system parameters. And it's specific to be used with system platform. So the application engine knows about it. There's an attribute in the app engine that it, it wants you to define it in the historian. The app engine sees this, as well as the historian client. So <clears throat> the neat thing about the app engine seeing it is if the historian goes away, whether it's the primary or the backup, the engine will go into store and forward mode for either one of the historians and then send the data uh, automatically when it comes back up. And likewise, when the historian client connects to it, it will also connect to whichever historian is available. Now, there are some things to be aware of. It's not intended to be a synchronized pair. So if you make configuration changes to one historian, you need to be sure that you perform the same actions with the other historian. If you import CSV data on one historian, you have to do that on the other historian. If you add or update data in the historian using a SQL client or the SDK, you have to repeat that on the partner as well. So those are the three little gotchas that you have to be aware of, but it's great for if you want to send data for two places. So let's take a look at what that looks like from a configuration perspective. So now we're looking at my primary historian under the system parameters, and you look for a parameter name called historian partner. So here I'm going to configure this with the name of my redundant historian partner. Click OK. So it's giving me a warning saying, the proper operation of the paired historized data, you must ensure that the paired historian is configured to use this historian as well. Do you want to continue? Yes. OK, so now we're over in the redundant partner and we're going to cross sync it back to the other historian partner by filling in the same system parameter pointing back to the other historian. And let's not forget that we have to commit the pending changes on both historians. So we'll just verify what I modified. And we'll go back to the other historian and commit the pending changes. We'll verify. Okay, now we're in the IDE and we're going to configure historization just as if we normally would by specifying to enable storage to the historian and specifying the name of the primary. Once we do that, and we select our attributes to be historized, we can simply deploy things. Okay, now that everything's deployed, let's go into Object Viewer. So once we're in Object Viewer, we want to verify the engine.historian.connection partner is set to the correct value. So primary and the connection partner, and it's correct. So now we're finished. So now we can just go into the historian client and verify that the trending is working. So notice that I'll connect just to my local historian and the historian client takes care of the rest. If one of them fails, it switches over to the other. If the engine detects one of them goes away, it sends itself into store and forward mode. So you don't have to worry about that. Just have to remember that the two are not synchronized. So if you make changes, you have to make the change in both places. So thanks for your time watching this video. 